In a battle scene, we hardly pay attention to one of the most important things. I'm not referring to weapons or vehicles, but these simple sand barriers. If you look closely, you'll see they're everywhere. You are certainly already familiar with the traditional sandbags used to make fortifications in a battlefield. They are very versatile and able to dissipate explosions and stop most projectiles and hostile vehicles. But this one you're seeing is an evolution of the sandbag. It is called the Hesco Barrier, which was used extensively in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and is still used today. It allows the construction of complex military fortifications super fast, such as a forward base perimeter, with protection for barracks, command center, for aircraft and other vehicles, for ammunition depots, guardhouses, and other structures. Imagine losing an aircraft that costs millions by being on the ground exposed to a direct attack. Look at this German base in Afghanistan with the entire perimeter surrounded. Note also the internal barriers to reduce and isolate the effects of mortars and artillery. This huge basket is called a gabion a flexible, permeable, reinforced structure of great durability and strength, which is filled with sand, earth, or gravel from the place where it is installed. In fact, it was used even before traditional sandbags. Look at this illustration from 1588, showing gabions protecting the cannons. At that time, they were baskets made from wickerwork. Look at them being used 300 years later in the construction of Fort Stedman in 1865 in the U.S. Civil War. They came in several different diameters so that they could be stored one inside the other. During the Crimean War between 1853 and 1856, there was a shortage of brushwood to make the baskets, which led to the use of scrap hoop iron from hay bales, and so began the idea of using metal in the structure of gabions. Despite being used for hundreds of years, these early gabions were not very practical. And then came the sandbags, simple and very efficient. But in 1989, the British James Heseldon, a former coal miner, invented this gabion made of collapsible wire mesh container and heavy-duty fabric liner, the famous Hesco Barrier. It was initially designed for erosion and flood control. In this 2017 flood in the United States, 140 soldiers built a 6.4 kilometers long, 1.2 meters tall Hesco Barrier. Although that was the initial purpose, the military soon saw its potential as a fortification barrier, being recognized as the most significant development in field fortification since World War II. The wire mesh is made of strengthened zinc aluminum coated steel, which is very resistant to corrosion and to shots and explosions. And the fabric is made of polypropylene, a thermoplastic polymer, heavy duty and flexible in addition to being flame retardant. But its main advantage is the quick and easy setup. It can be folded and easily transported, then on site, just unfold it. There are several sizes available with two units or several already pre-connected. And these units can be connected to each other by inserting a wire in each corner and a ring in the middle rod. They even designed a container with pre-wired cells to speed up the assembly process for longer walls. Just open one side of the container, drive and build. Each mounts a 300 meter barrier in less than one minute. Now that's productivity. Think about doing this with sandbags. Like sandbags, it is mounted on the surface of the ground, so it does not require a trench. And it has an open bottom, since no one will want to transport it with the material inside. To do so, just dismantle it. Once assembled, just fill it with material from the place where it is installed, such as sand, earth, or gravel. This can be done by the soldiers themselves using shovels, or by a wheel loader or excavator, as it is in the correct position because of the steel mesh. This greatly speeds up construction. One person fills about 20 sandbags per hour. Using HESCO in a wheel loader, this job is done 10 times faster. A 10 meters long wall will take two people and one front loading machine only 20 minutes to construct. Using sandbags, the same wall will take eight people eight hours to build and needs three times as much fill material so that the barrier can stand upright. It is also important to compact the material to increase the stability and protection provided by the higher density. To build a taller wall, simply place one on top of the other, or if it is even taller, a pyramid formation can be used. This way complex fortifications can be built, like a Lego. To disassemble it, you just have to remove the material from the inside, and then those metal rods. Or the metal rod can be removed directly without removing the material. But from what I've seen, they don't come off that easily. And that's where the good old angle grinder comes in. And if you want to make a permanent barrier, just concrete the sides and top. Comparing with sandbags, the disadvantages of HESCO Barrier is that it is heavier to transport because of the steel mesh and needs a wheel loader to fill it. Of course, conventional shovels can be used, but this way one of their main advantages is lost, which is agility and practicality. They also cost more than just a sandbag. But given its widespread use since the 90s, it is clear that it is still very effective. However, sandbags have not been completely replaced. For smaller barriers, they are still widely used. And now a bit of a bizarre fact about inventor Jimmy Heseldon. 
In December 2009, he purchased Segway, a company that made those self-balancing two-wheel electric scooters, with the first model being released in December 2001, and which were quite popular at the time, until people realized that it was very hard to control. It was very easy to lose your balance and fall flat on your face. to the break because uh, Joey went oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> On a conventional scooter, you have one wheel at the back and one at the front, aligned with the direction of movement, which makes balance a lot easier. This one, on the other hand, seems that its main purpose is to knock you down. Well, in 2010, nine months after buying the company, Jimmy, who was at a spa in the English countryside, went for a ride with his Segway off-road version. But the path he used was narrow, uneven, and full of tree roots. He ended up losing his balance and falling off a 13-meter cliff, dying at the age of 62. His fortune was estimated to be worth 166 million pounds, about 230 4 million today. And he was also a philanthropist donating millions to charity. Yeah, the guy likes saving lives. But his invention, the HESCO barrier, continues to save civilians and military alike. It is one of those simple, well-made inventions that are extremely useful, and for that reason it takes a long time for a new one to replace it. Let me know what you think of the HESCO barrier, and if you think it will soon be replaced or not. Thank you for your company, and until next time.